Scott Brown here. In today's exciting episode, I managed to get some work done despite all the rain. So this house was built in 1962 and it's a timber weatherboard house, native timber weatherboards, and they've been painted. And on this corner here, they've just mitered it. If you don't stay on top of the paint, you end up with this problem here. All the end grain is, a, is like a wick for moisture. It's expanded and then when the sun's dried it out, it's contracted. And with all that extra movement that you're not really meant to have, this leads to these cracks. So nowadays, when we do something like this, we would prime the corners. And on top of that, we'd also put one of these on. That is a corner soaker. And that would just go in there like that. Before you paint it, you'd slide it up there. And then once it's in place, you'd then nail the next weatherboard on. So that's what we're gonna sort out in this episode. But I was telling my friend Eva about this. She's also a qualified builder. And I was saying what I was gonna do on the corner, I was gonna put some of those soakers there. And she said, why don't you just do a box corner? kind of like what we did on those villas and bungalows in previous episodes and I didn't have a good answer as to why not so that's what we're gonna do One thing that I keep forgetting to do is put this back on the table saw. We took this off because often the table saw would get clogged up and the dust wouldn't shoot out of it. So the problem with not having this cover on is that the dust pretty much just falls absolutely everywhere. So with this back on, it should just come out of here. Ultimately, I, I really need another vacuum for this, but I don't want to buy a vacuum. So it's not ideal, it's got a groove right where I want to join it. I'm just going to join it anyway with a bit of glue and some pins. But that's the corner. Painted all the same colour, scriber, scriber. But first we have to repair the cracked corner before we cover it up. And you can only get in so far with this. I'm trying to get into the engram, but without taking the weatherboards off, it's kind of impossible. I suppose I could get a spray paint, but you'd quickly fill the gap anyway, so again the box corner. A box corner is the way to go. Can you hear that? That is the sound of cicadas. That means the sun is shining again. I was meant to put this video up last week and in the interval between now and when I was last filming, it just rained and rained and rained. It's meant to be the middle of summer. Um, I had a friend from Switzerland who was staying with us uh, during that time 
and he said there's a saying there that translates to it only rained once today and that means it rained all day long didn't stop well it only rained once in the last five days until now let's continue uh, but of course you know I didn't just sit around in that time before we continue I painted painted these walls make them look a little bit fresher last night I put the second coat of varnish on here and it's looking beautiful the idea of that varnish is to stop the timber going all gross it's very easy for ply to absorb whatever lands on it so the varnish kind of protects it all right let's get back out there while we have the sunshine all right what i like to do when i'm about to put the box corner on is get an overall check you know just check to see if it's plumb this looks pretty good actually you know it's within the lines we need to do something about this bottom weatherboard but anyway before i do that i've already cut the angle on there and scribed it to this so i know that's good and then i like to get my level roughly as level as that long level was and then I know it'll be consistent with the rest. And then that lets me know how much I need to cut out of this bottom weatherboard. Come over a closer look at this. It's being pushed out at the bottom and therefore it's sticking out further than all of these. So let's do something about that, shall we? Now I can just drop this template piece in, mark the bottom, and now we know what line to measure to, and also what angle to cut the final piece on. Now the top. Okay. Now we've got to be careful because this is asbestos. So we could probably safely just cut all the bottom and leave this top piece here, which would mean we wouldn't touch the asbestos. And honestly, it's way up here, and I don't think the owner, me, is going to care about that detail. Let's multi-tool it. Yeah, 2453 to the long point. It was 2453, right? Right? Alright, let's go. Do you want to know how, how you can tell that you've got a good cup? You can just walk away from it without nailing it. If I told this joke before, I lost a small tube of this stuff. So we're gonna have to improvise. Oh yeah, just another point. If you were doing this for someone, like if you're an apprentice or something and this is your job, um, maybe have a think about how you can do it more efficiently. So because I'm filming myself, I'm trying to show step by step exactly how to do it, but I need to do the whole house. So if I wasn't filming it, I would cut all these straight pieces in one go. So every step that I'm doing, I would try and do it for each corner. And then I put the box corner on, nail it on, do it on all corners, and then put all the scribers on at the same time. That way it usually works a bit more efficiently. You get more of a rhythm going. And remember your uh, tube of glue too. That way you can get things done quicker as well. <laughs>
here is to get your scriber piece parallel with your boxing. So you measure to your furthest point in, which is there, and it's around about 14 mil, so I'm gonna cut a ripping 15 mil. So obviously this won't click completely into place because I've got to scrub the rest of it, but it won't be in the way down the bottom there. Pass the test. Few things are more satisfying in a carpenter's life than a successful scriber cut. <sighs> Looks great. Yeah, you like it? Yeah, I do. Reminds me of um, mum and dad's old house. Has anyone ever told you you're a pretty good builder, eh? Yeah, it's been mentioned. <laughs> I'd hire you. Well, thanks, Jess. What's going on here, Jess? These are my, oh, don't fall over, Jessica. These are my surprise tomatoes. Over Christmas when my parents visited, um, they were about that tall. Mum said, I think oh those they were are- little than that. It was just like a little thing on the ground. Oh, they were tiny. And mum said, that those like are tomatoes. This. And I just sort of went, oh, okay. <laughs> Ignored them. Um, now they look like this. And it's so cool. <laughs> so today I staked them after all the rain. They're pretty impressive. Yeah, they're, they're so cool. So surprise tomatoes. Who would have thought? Your website shouldn't be a surprise though. That's why you should design it with Squarespace. And there we go. With the power of editing, we are in the following day and this video is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is a all-in-one platform to build your online presence and run your business. I care about the quality of work that I do and one of the best ways to show that is on my website. Squarespace make that easy for me with features like their portfolios and galleries, automatic image scaling, and being able to connect your website to your social media accounts. Squarespace also offers support, so if you're a rookie like Jess and I, it's very helpful. The platform is very simple, easy to use, easy to make a website, and it looks good, which is very important. So if you are keen to set up your own website, Squarespace also offer a free trial, so you have nothing to lose. And then once you've had a go and you're ready to launch your website, go to squarespace.com forward slash Scott Brown Carpentry to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. So thank you Squarespace, we really appreciate your support. Do you want to have a look at my painting? Let's have a look at my painting. Sorry about the sun, it's very bright, finally. Can't complain. Um, I've got my first top coat on that box corner there, and I quite like the white. You know, if the windows are white, and the box corners are white, it's a good contrast to the weatherboards. Speaking of the weatherboards, it's about the time where I do the flat soakers. Let's do it now. Oh, and also there was a crack. You probably noticed the crack. So now that I have that scriber there to hold the weatherboard in place, I'm gonna show you how I repair that crack. All right, let's see how we put these flat soakers on. They basically go here, over the join. So we want it roughly there. Because you've got two boards meeting, it's probably better to get the square off the board above it because it's a solid 
the single board. And then I put that on there like that. That shows me how wide I need to make a cut in the gap. And this is the noisy part. And I'm just going to trim the top of this. It's pretty uh, common for these weatherboard accessories not to match the weatherboard houses in New Zealand because they typically make these for new houses that have new weatherboard profiles. Some people like to put silicon uh, behind their soakers. Um, I don't like to do that because I think, I think soakers are designed to protect the ends of the weatherboards from the worst of the weather, not from all of the weather. If water gets in there, I want the water to be able to get out. And then you get little soaker nails. Important point about soaker nails is they've got a ring shank in there. I don't think my lens will be able to focus on that. This nail is so small. So if you were to put a flat shanked nail in there, it has no um, resistance from pulling. The one with the ring is far more likely to stay in there when the timber shrinks. Oh, and a little bonus thing. This is a galvanized weatherboard, so I primed the back of it with a, with a rust-proof spray, metal spray. Just a little extra there. You can get stainless steel, but they're like four times the price. Alright, this is just regular epoxy, two part epoxy. I'm really enjoying working on my own house, it's a real novelty. And as you can see, this is only one box corner. And right after this, I'm going to immediately do the other ones and repair weatherboards. And there's a long list of things that we can do here, which is awesome. Um, heating, uh, in the last episode, you guys helped me a lot. Got a lot of great comments, a lot of great advice and man who knew i would get that much response to it so if you're searching for heating for your house um I'll, I'll link my previous video below and go go check out the comment section of that because there's a lot of great advice in there and um it seems like the system that's going to fit us the best is a ducted heat pump system um based on the comments and based on the type of house we have because every, every climate's different every house is different um, and some of the locals here have reached out to me and said that they've got ducted heat pump systems and they're working awesome. So Jess and I are leaning towards that option. Oh, I've made this too runny. <laughs> what a mess. I'm glad I got another crack down here. Um, we're leaning towards that and we're getting quotes. It's not going to be cheap, but uh, it seems like the most efficient uh, option. As you can probably tell, um, I'm not paying too much attention to how the paint looks because we've got a lot of renovating to do and a lot of these weatherboards might change and then when it's all said and done, we'll repaint the whole house a chosen colour when there's new doors in there and branch sliders or bifolds, whatever, whatever we end up putting in. So this is just to stay on top of damage and prevent further damage. I'm going to end this video right here.